everything you ever wanted to know about joining AWS as a solutions architect. So after this video went live, many of you have been asking about how I got into AWS. Um, others uh, wanted to know more about the hiring process. So I decided to make this video to try and shed some light uh, on the interview process from my perspective as an AWS solutions architect. Let's talk about the role. First of all, what is a solutions architect? And an SA is uh, uh, someone responsible for the design of applications or services within an organization, right? Uh, typically, an SA works side by side uh, with a development team. He or she must have a balanced mix of technical, business, people, uh, 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 and process skills. So a successful SA, in my opinion, finds ways, ways to convey the same message um, using different words for uh, different types of audiences. And so at AWS, an SA is one of the most valuable resources. And you hear Andy Jassy says that a lot of times, but how does AWS define the role of an SA and how does being an SA uh, at AWS any different from being an SA at a different uh, organization? Well, um, let, me, let me start by saying that, you know, it's, it's a known fact that an SA at AWS is expected to not only help their uh, direct customers, but also contribute to solving problems at a bigger scale. So if you're an SA at AWS, you're expected to share uh, blog posts, uh, templates, uh, reference architectures, white papers, podcasts, books, uh, pretty much any mean you know, of sharing a solution with a wider uh, audience. Wow. Now, let me give you some examples of problems you might be working on as a solutions architect. I just want you to have an idea. A customer of mine who's a big retail company uh, has made many acquisitions recently and then other companies uh, from all over the world to expand their um, business footprint. And so we've been working with them on a solution to build a resilient and reliable data ingestion pipeline. So this pipeline's goal is to collect all kinds of data from the different uh, acquired companies and their departments. Um, um, the collection needs needed to be in real time. And then we run different algorithms, right, on all this data that we get and present the results under one single pane of glass, um, giving stakeholders a precise look into the health of the business. So data consolidation is one of the um, common problems probably uh, you will be addressing as a solutions architect, you know, right now. Another customer of mine uh, was looking to migrate their offering into a pure SaaS model. And so we worked with their product, uh, their ops and their developer team to design the right SaaS solution for their, for their needs. Uh, and so we had to leverage many patterns uh, uh, in doing so uh, and design many domains uh, of their solutions, um, security and data isolation, um, right sizing and auto scaling, um, onboarding new tenants. Um, we had to design solutions for tenant health and monitoring, uh, billing and metering and you know and, and, and so much more other uh, domains. And the end result was a scalable and resilient solution and it's it's always so much rewarding when you get that direct feedback uh, from customers, um, you know, and, and when you also get that direct feedback from the design, you know, you design it to scale, you, say, you see it scaling, right? Um, so it is always, you know, rewarding uh, when you see that. With other customers, I work to elaborate uh, strategies allowing them to go global strategies that involve leveraging the multi-region aspects of the cloud. We worked on data backups, uh, we worked on disaster recovery policies, uh, among others. So these are just a few uh, of the problems that you will be working on as a solutions architect. All right, so now that we got a little bit familiar with the role, there is one last thing I need to touch on before we can move on uh, to the interview. Something AWS and Amazon live by. It's the 14 leadership principles. And these are 14 principles heavily used within the company every day. 
whether we're discussing ideas for new projects uh, or deciding on the best approach uh, to solving a problem. It is just, you know, one of the things that makes Amazon peculiar. Let's take the first one, customer obsession. At AWS, we literally, literally obsess about our customers. I cannot stress this enough. We start with the customer's needs and work backwards from there. Um, 90% of our roadmap uh, uh, and features are actually a direct result of customer feedback. Another aspect of our customer's obsession principle is earning and, and keeping customers' trust. For example, it is fairly normal for an SA, given a certain type of constraints, uh, to recommend the solution of one of our rivals if it means solving our customer's problem. Now let's take another LP, frugality which I can resume with a simple phrase, accomplish more with less. And so being frugal uh, speaks to one's resourcefulness, uh, uh, to one's self-efficiency and invention. So you bet that cost optimization sits very high in the list of things essays are expected to include in their day-to-day -day considerations. And, you know, I'll, I'll just put some links in the description for where you can find more about the 14 LPs uh, of Amazon. And so with that, we can start talking about the interview. So interviewing at AWS is no different than interviewing for some of the other uh, big companies, uh, you know, Google, Microsoft, Facebook, Twitter, yada, yada, yada. Uh, in my case, an AWS agent reached out to me prior to the interview day uh, to arrange the flight and accommodation. Uh, but, you know, if, if you're interviewing during the pandemic, then Never mind. Uh, you'll be able to go through all the interviews remotely. Uh, we have processes for that, so no worries at all. Uh, I also had a couple of calls with my recruiter who explained uh, what should I expect during the interview. Uh, she mentioned how the different sessions will go uh, and asked me to prepare for one hour presentation. But we'll get to that in a minute. She also asked me to review the 14 leadership principles and try to think about situations uh, where I came across a few of them just, you know, to save some time uh, during the interview day. And in all fairness, between the recruiter and the agents, everything was taken care of uh, and all I had to do was pretty much show up during the interview day and kick some ass. Now this might slightly vary, but uh, expect a combination of three elements uh, during the interview day. Interview sessions with technical questions, a whiteboarding session, and a presentation. So let's talk about the technical questions first. During my interview day, I've met with uh, different people from different teams, right? Uh, I've met with solutions architects, account managers. I've also met, you know, I've, I've also got interviewed by business people. So I don't think you will have to pass those lead code uh, programming questions that have nothing to do with reality, right? No one is going to ask you to explain um, quantum electrodynamics in two minutes or or how many bricks are there in Shanghai, right? Um, not for the SA role anyway. I mean, I didn't, no one asked me that. Um, instead, the technical questions I've had were around designing resilient, highly available and scalable systems with a given set of constraints that touched on uh, performance, uh, cost optimization, latency reduction, um, data sovereignty and regulation, data encryption. I mean, you get it. Um, so in every interview session, the interviewers started by presenting themselves and setting the boundaries of the session and the nature uh, of the questions and domains I was going to be tested on. Because, you know, you might have a whole interview session about security, uh, maybe a different session about SaaS workloads or, or disaster recovery, maybe a session that would mix, you know, all of them. In any way, the interviewer will make sure to share this information with you so you'll know exactly what to expect. Now, something to keep in mind, uh, your answers don't have to include AWS services only. For example, if asked about uh, a use case that involves event streaming, you can, of course, mention a combination of AWS Lambda and Amazon Kinesis. I mean, um, Lambda does event source mapping natively, so uh, you know, it, it can read from the Kinesis stream. But you can also mention Apache Kafka if that's what you're comfortable with. Um, the interviewers, in my case, made it super clear that they were interested in testing analytical uh, design and, and, and uh, problem-solving skills regardless of the tools 
uh, I choose. That doesn't mean uh, you won't get questions about AWS services, right? It's just that no one will ask you to recite by heart uh, all EC2 instance types and their respective pricing, right? But expect questions such as, um, what are some of the security best practices from Amazon EC2, for instance? Uh, and you'd be expected to talk about IAM roles, uh, um, least privilege principles using IAM policies, uh, automating the creation and rotation of access credentials. Uh, you can also touch on you know, how you'd use uh, VPCs, subnets, security groups, to limit access, all that good stuff. You might also get questions about real situations you had to deal with. So someone might ask, tell me about a time in your career where you had to convince your boss they are making a wrong decision, right? Or um, have you ever had to motivate others? Um, how did you do it? Um, and I want you to remember that an essay is a customer's facing role, right? So people uh, and business skills are expected as well. And for best addressing these type of questions, I highly suggest the use of the STAR format. That is situation, task, action, and results. And there is a ton of content out there to learn more about the STAR method. Uh, 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 so I'll, you know, I'll, I'll just link uh, uh, to them in the, in the description as well. Here's a tip for you. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know. And this is actually should be, um, you know, it, it should be the case everywhere uh, uh, because a more experienced person will be able to detect uh, when you're trying to bullshit them. Um, saying, you know, I don't know when obviously you don't know uh, makes you gain some time since the interviewer will, you know, just move on to the next question, uh, giving you another chance uh, to impress them. Uh, but it also speaks to your character. Uh, I think one of the simplest ways to gain the trust uh, of not only your customers but people around you is you know simply to be honest all right let's talk about the whiteboarding session whiteboarding is a super important skill to master and one you will be using pretty much every day designing solutions on a whiteboard while collaborating with a customer and improving the design in real time is a super underappreciated skill. But anyway, um, expect a whiteboarding questions, you know, they will mimic a real life working scenario uh, with a customer in their offices or remotely as we've, we've gotten used to lately. There is not much I can teach you about whiteboarding in this specific video, but check out this guy's YouTube channel. Um, he has a few great videos on the matter and, uh, and I've also put some links uh, in the description, which takes us to the third part of the interview day, the presentation. So I remember starting interviews at 9 a.m. Uh, and I believe at noon, I was given a 45 minute lunch break. I'm not sure if it was noon, 11.30, um, it's, it's accessory. So after my lunch break, I had a one hour time window to give a presentation about a problem I have solved before. And the panel I had to present to included people with business and people with technical roles. Uh, and my presentation had to include the company, the, uh, the challenges, both business and technical, my approach and, and, and the solution that I suggested, and an architecture diagram describing uh, the solution. Uh, also uh, with a couple of slides that speaks onto the results that came to the company after my solution was adopted. Now, I want you to remember to mention your reasons behind making the decisions you've made designing your solution. So if you've chosen a certain EC2 instance type over another because you were trying to cut cost, well, now's the time to mention it and leverage the fact that you apply frugality, right, to your designs. Uh, if you've made the decision to deploy in a certain region because of business requirements, that's the moment to talk about it as well. Um, you can also talk about how you were thinking big uh, when you designed the solution. See, something uh, if you've worked with me, you've definitely heard me saying is, I believe that building a solution is easy. Um, the cloud is here, managed services exist, frameworks exist, patterns exist. 
Uh, there's even the no-code movement that's growing by the day, uh, allowing you to build you know, a full application without writing one line of code. So building a solution is really not that difficult. But building a solution that scales, now that's something harder, right? It's, it's a little bit harder. Um, but again, building a solution that can be maintained for eight years, right, for 10 years, uh, a solution where you can switch technologies whenever you want, that would survive switching teams. Now, you know, that's the hardest job of all. Some managers will tell you, you know, don't, don't worry, we'll just rewrite this app in two years anyway. That's a red flag. So anyway, back to our topic. Uh, if you took the time to think through your design and design it in a way that allows the solution to grow and survive business needs, survive market changes, uh, survive team changes, technology changes, take the time to mention how awesome your design is. So there you have it for the interview day. Uh, we covered the three types of sessions you'll go through, technical questions, whiteboarding, and presentations. And I want to finish by talking just a little bit more about the role of an essay at AWS. See, we talked about how 90% of our roadmap is driven by customers uh, and essays play a major role in collecting this feedback from customers and taking it back uh, to the services team. So in a way, essays at AWS influence the roadmap of the 170 plus services uh, AWS offers today. SA uh, at AWS also join customers in planning and making strategic decisions. For example, when many countries went into lockdown because of COVID-19, we saw a big switch towards everything remote, right? Remote education, remote work. And so many of our customers had to switch their offering towards a remote model. And SAs were accompanying AWS customers, advising and helping uh, at every step of this journey. Building POCs, yes, uh, we do design an architecture, but sometimes a POC is the best way to showcase a service, right? Or, a, or an aspect of a given service. So there's still many, many topics we need to touch on, like the role of certifications in the hiring process, uh, but I'll be making more videos to address these subjects. I didn't want to cram everything into one video, so make sure to subscribe and hit the notification button if you don't want to miss them. Which brings us to the end of this video. Thank you all for watching, and if you have any question, make sure to use the comment section below. Uh, I will definitely try to cover as many requests as I can. Thank you and see you in the next video.